Okay, it's now time for member statements. The member for Brampton. <coughs> no. One of you needs to stand up. The member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, a newly formed volunteer group in Welland is fo focusing its efforts on a discarded needle cleanup in hopes of making the city safer for everyone. Catherine Sullivan and her friends have formed the Welland Harm Reduction Society. These residents walk the streets of Welland, the parks, underneath bridges, and everywhere in between, collecting used syringes and drug paraphernalia. I want to commend them for their efforts. They are reaching out to the city, Niagara Region Public Health, and other community partners like Overdose Prevention and Education Network of Niagara, and Positive Living Niagara, whose executive director is Glenn Walker, who I know very well. He spearheaded the safe injection site in St. Catharines and their ongoing discussions with the possibility of similar sites in Welland and Niagara Falls. Mr. Speaker, as this government reduces the number of much needed safe injection sites, we at least have in Niagara community groups and people taking ownership. They have feet on the ground and are doing outreach work and education, and I say thank you for all that you are doing. Thank you. The member for Simcoe North. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wish to present someone exceptional from Simcoe because of its contribution to. I wish to introduce you, Martin Lalonde. He will be here with us today. Will be received the award. The Order de la Fad is awarded by the Assemblée Parlementaire de la Francophonie to those who have distinguished themselves in the service of the cooperation and friendship and have promoted their French language in their community. It is an appropriate recognition of Monsieur Lalonde's decades long career teaching, advocating, and sharing the French language in Simcoe North. Martin is a pillar of the Francophone community in Simcoe North. In the early 2000s, Monsieur Lalonde was integral in founding the Living Museum and the Festival de Loup, both in the community of La Fontaine. As the president of the festival, he organized, led, and partook in the annual howling contest in this amazing three-day event. Oh. <laughs> Martin is also very active in Club Richelieu's seniors' residences in La Fontaine and Penetang, and has written for the community newspaper, Le Goût de Vivre, under the alias Eugene El Arbert. As an educator and community leader, Monsieur Lalonde has dedicated his life to the continued vitality of our region's 400-year-old French heritage. Nous les résidents de Simcoe Nord vous As from Simcoe Nord, we wish to thank you for your contribution. And we wish to thank you for your contribution. Merci, Monsieur Martin Lalonde. Member Statements, the member for Windsor to come see. Good afternoon, Speaker. Tomorrow, firefighters in Windsor and Detroit will hold a special ceremony on the international boundary line of the Ambassador Bridge. This is all connected to the anniversary of Windsor's Great Fire in 1849. A warehouse situated on the site, now the home of the St. Clair College Center for the Arts, caught fire just after midnight. Strong northwest winds whipped the flames, and in no time, much of the downtown business core was ablaze. Windsor's volunteer fire brigade couldn't keep up. The flames were seen from across the river, and Detroit engine number five, a hand pumper, two hose carts, and the men of engine companies four and five hopped aboard the ferry Hastings and rushed to Windsor. They saved the Windsor Castle Hotel and other buildings, even as their helmets burned to cinders and their hair and beards were singed. The following morning, most of Windsor's business district lay in ashes, but the village was saved, thanks to the aid of the firemen from Detroit. In appreciation, Windsor citizens gave the Detroit firemen an elegant silver ceremonial speaking trumpet. Speaker, long before electronic bullhorns and PA systems, Fire chiefs use speaking trumpets to exhort their men to greater effort. They remain an iconic symbol of command on fire service uniform badges. 
The historic silver speaking trumpet will be front and center at the mid-bridge ceremony tomorrow. It's a lasting symbol of friendship and cooperation between our two city fire departments. Over the years, firefighters from Windsor and Detroit provide, or firefighters from Windsor provided mutual aid uh, in Detroit as well. Speaker, what a fitting way for today's heroes to celebrate 170 years of a shared legacy. Member statements. The member for Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Just the last couple of days, I was shocked to learn from the Center of Israel and Jewish Affairs that a program at Stephen Lewis Secondary School in Mississauga promoted the libel that Israelis harvest Palestinian organs and conduct, and I'm quoting, human testing of pharmaceuticals on Palestinians. These are more than offensive lies. They are contemporary manifestations of a vicious anti-Semitic trope used to justify persecution and violence against Jews for centuries. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism, the most widely used around the world right now, is clear. It is anti-Semitic to use the symbols and images associated with classic anti-Semitism, like blood libel, to characterize Israel or Israelis. That this has reportedly happened in a school in our province where impressionable minds are being shaped makes it even more distressing. According to Statistics Canada, an anti-Semitic hate crime occurred on average once every 24 hours in 2017, and that is up 60% from 2016. Uh, did I say 2017? Up 60% from 2016. When it comes to hate crime, Jewish Canadians remain the most frequently targeted group. Mr. Speaker, how we respond to incidents of this kind defines us as a society. The Peel District School Board is investigating. The Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs has offered to provide training, and an entire community is waiting for answers. We look forward to hearing what concrete action will be taken to hold those responsible to account and to ensure this shameful episode is, tur is turned into an impactful learning opportunity about anti-Semitic hate. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Speaker. Once again, I am bringing attention to the highly important issue of suicide prevention barriers that should be installed on the Burgoyne Bridge in my riding of St. Catharines. Since October 2018, six individuals have tragically taken their own lives on the Burgoyne Bridge in St. Catharines. A regional bridge, might I add, Speaker. Last week, the Minister of Transportation referred to it as a municipal city responsibility. Expert trip testimony acquired through the Niagara region states that these barriers will make difference, just as they have right here in Toronto at the Bleur and Viaduct. Not only do the barriers prevent further tragedies for families of St. Catharines, they act as protection for vehicle operators driving directly below the bridge. These barriers will save lives. The very busy provincial 406 highway runs directly under the Burgoyne Bridge in St. Catherine Speaker. I'd like to remind the Minister of Transportation that the ministry absolutely does have a responsibility to protect any driver on the 406 highway. Therefore, the ministry needs to contribute to the barriers and become closely involved in discussions with the region of Niagara surrounding the implementation of these life-saving barriers. I look forward to discussing this matter further with the minister. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise in the House today and uh, speak on behalf of my residents of Scarborough Guildwood. This weekend, the Rotary Club of Scarborough held their annual budget breakfast to talk about what the budget means for Scarborough. Sadly, no PC members bothered to show up for this annual breakfast. Nonetheless, we had a great breakfast with great discussion, and what was made clear is that Doug Ford's austerity budget that was ushered in last week is bringing another era to refer to um, ministers by their riding name or the premier by the premier, members by their riding names. Since 1996 to 1999, 
It, asks, it, it actually puts forward the most conservative budget despite a growing economy here in Ontario. Cuts to post-secondary education of $700 million, cuts to social services of $1 billion, cuts to justice, cuts to education by raising class sizes and giving students less on a per-funding basis, and cuts to Indigenous affairs of 49 per cent. Speaker, this budget shows that the PC government's priorities lie based on what they focused on alcohol, beer, and gambling. They didn't mention poverty not even one time in this budget, Speaker. Nothing speaks louder than this about the Ford government's priorities. Thank you. Thank you very much. The member for Chatham, Kent Leamington. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to commend the excellent work being done in my riding of Chatham, Kent Leamington by the Children's Treatment Centre of Chatham. Mr. Speaker, the life of every child has value, and the programs offered by the Children's Treatment Center work wonders in helping children from birth to age 18 actualize their value and potential. They help our communities know and realize that a child with special needs gives far more to their family and community than they take. When a family has a child diagnosed with a disability, it can seem like there is a mountain ahead of them. Without proper information and supports, they can easily fall into despair. This problem is exasperated, Mr. Speaker, when the supports that are out there do not complement each other, turning life into a long to-do list, chasing down disparate and unconnected services. That's where the Children's Treatment Center of Chatham and similar groups step in. They ensure that all services and supports that a family with a disabled child needs are in one location, locally administered for differing local needs and emphasizing a community experience. One of the most important things they do is working with school boards to fully integrate students with special needs, training staff, and students alike in supporting the transition from earlier supports to a positive and safe learning environment. Local champions like the Children's Treatment Centre in Chatham do great work in helping children with special needs integrate successfully into our schools and communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Brampton Centre. Brampton North. Brampton North. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is an honour to rise in this House <coughs> pardon me, in celebration of Sikh Heritage Month. Sikhs have been in Canada for over 100 years, and they have made valuable contributions to Canadian society. Their contributions enrich our community and make it a better place to live and thrive. We just celebrated Black History Month in February, and now we are celebrating Sikh Heritage Month. This is very important, Mr. Speaker. In the world of growing divisiveness, hatred, and racism, it is more important than ever to take the opportunity to learn about others in our society and be more accepting. The Sikh community was recently belittled and labeled by the federal government with growing intolerance. Such actions create conditions of racism and hatred and place a target on the community's back. That is why Sikh Heritage Month is such an important platform for the Sikh community in Ontario, because it allows a platform to educate others about what Sikhs are and what their values and beliefs are. I want to congratulate the Sikh Heritage Month Foundation, who, in partnership with the City of Brampton, have put forward a calendar of wonderful events in Brampton. I commend the work that is the foundation that they're doing, and I personally look forward to attending great community-based events celebrating Sikh Heritage Month for the rest of April. I want to wish everyone a happy Sikh Heritage Month and a happy Vaisakhi. Vagroji ka khalsa, Vagroji kafate. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's always an honour to rise in this House, and today I want to talk about some amazing athletes from my riding of Brantford Brant. Neil McDonald, Carrie Lane, and Jacob Potts just recently participated in the 2019 Special Olympics World Games in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, this past March. 
This year's Games had an estimated 7,000 athletes from 170 countries and 20,000 volunteers competing in 24 sports. In the sport of bocce, Neil Macdonald won two silver medals, Carrie Lane won a silver and a bronze, and as a team, they won fourth in the world. And that is just amazing, Mr. Speaker. In track and field, Jacob Potts won fourth in the 4 by 100 relay, sixth in the 200-meter run, and seventh place in long jump. What an achievement. Prior to competing, athletes were taken to Dubai, where they did a variety of activities, including seeing the Grand Mosque. And after the games were over, they did more unique things like driving over dunes, witnessing native entertainment, and camel riding. These athletes truly are remarkable, and I want them to know that Brand for Brand is proud of them for their dedication, commitment, and passion. Congratulations, Neil, Kerry, and Jacob. You give me my juice. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Mississauga, Malton. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this past weekend, I also had the opportunity to celebrate Visakhi. Visakhi on the day of Visakhi in 1699, 10th Sikh Guru, Shri Guru Gobind Singh Ji, created and initiated the Khalsa. Khalsa, a warrior with a duty to protect the innocent from any form of religious persecution. Sikhs all around the globe come together to commemorate and reflect on this significant historical event. Mr. Speaker, Vaisakhi is a day of celebration, beginning of harvest period. Families gather at their local temples with flowers and offerings to thank God for this year's plentiful crop and to pray for future prosperity. It is also believed that Goddess Ganga descended to this planet and devotees take the ritual dip in holy waters of Ganga. Not only this, Mr. Speaker, this festival is also celebrated among Tamil community as Putendu, by the Nepalese community as Nepalese New Year, and by the Buddhist community as Visakha or Buddha Purima to commemorate the birth, enlightenment, and death of Gautam Buddha, irrespective of religious belief. It is an occasion for celebrating the community's growth and for remembering a set of shared value and united memories. In both its cultural and religious context, Vesakhi is essentially about community progress and celebration. Mr. Speaker, I believe festivals are stress levers and help us balance our emotions. More positive positivity naturally lowers negativity and brings us together. On this auspicious week, I like to urge everyone, let's celebrate each other's ce celebrations and festivals together. Let's build a better world full of happiness and joy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this afternoon. Reports by committees.